Pride Auto's transmission mount is a modification that car guys look to purchase to have a sportier, faster car. But why does it feel sportier and faster after you install this mount? To answer that, we first have to understand what the rometer is. But before we continue, I'm gonna wait for you to hit the like button. Are you done? So, duro is the Latin definition for hard. Meter, well, is a way to name an instrument to measure. A durometer is pretty much a tool which is used to measure a material's hardness or how well it can hold out to any changes or indentions when force is applied. So, durometer, get it? Durometer. Now, shore hardness is the actual measurement you get from a durometer. For example, the shore hardness rating of our poly bushing in Pride Auto Transmission Mount is 60A. The definition of shore hardness is the measure of resistance of a material to the penetration of the needle under a defined spring force. The higher the number, the higher the hardness. Shore 00 being very soft material like gel or bubblegum. Shore A being a soft to semi-rigid elastomer, something more or less like rubber. And D being the hardest going up to like plastics. Although I define two different things, you will commonly find the term durometer be used to describe the tool and the measurement both combined. As you can see here on the chart, 60A overlaps 0D, which is not soft yet still somewhat flexible. That is the type of bushing that Pride Auto offers with this kit and I believe is best suited for my application, including the majority of the cues out there. Let me explain why. A stiff poly bushing will keep your driveline parts where they're supposed to be and give it a long lasting improved throttle response over the factory soft degrading rubber, making it a perfect candidate for a track car that is also a daily driver. When you have a stiffer than OE poly bushing on the transmission mount, it increases your throttle response since they will keep those components from moving excessively during throttle loading and unloading like the original bushings do. The stiffer poly bushing is the reason why the car feels smoother while shifting. However, on the downside, you do sacrifice a low amount of NVH for this increased performance. Now, when I say a low amount of NVH, which stands for noise, vibration, and hardness, I mean it. Initially, the noise is audible. You hear your driveline whining as you accelerate and decelerate. A vibration is felt through the seat and floorboard when you rev it while parked and on full throttle, and no harshness was ever noted going over bumps. However, after you drive about three to 500 miles, the poly bushing does break in and makes 95% of the noise and vibration pretty much non-existent. It'll be to a level that wouldn't even bother you. One thing I absolutely love about this mount is the fact that it's modular, meaning you can switch between a poly and a solid insert. A race car needs the hardest, stiffest bushing it can get to increase takeoff speed and to withstand the abuse it takes at the track. Pride gives you the option to use a solid mount, but I don't recommend using a solid mount. Not only does your NVH increase drastically to uncomfortable levels for daily commuting, when utilizing the OE motor mounts, you are increasing the likelihood of cracking your transmission case. Yet, even with solid engine and transmission mounts, your chassis might just flex enough one day and it won't be good on your wallet. Now, this doesn't mean that it will happen to you in your Q50 or Q60, but I just wanted to let you know that it's a possibility and it's happened to other people's cars. Now, with all that being said, I'll play a clip from the time I installed it on my boy's Red Sport and you can gauge his reaction to it. But bear in mind, like I stated previously, the initial NVH is apparent. I will then play a clip of my reaction with the mount already broken in and then you can gauge my reaction and compare the two and decide for yourself whether you want the poly insert or the solid insert. So let's get right into it. What was it that you noticed? Immediately, I am noticing that there is almost no movement and I can actually feel the drive shaft moving and spinning. Do you hear anything different? Yes, I hear everything. Wise, do you? Oh, that's what you hear. That wearing noise, you've never had it before, right? So definitely 
definitely at least comparing it to my car I can hear a little drivetrain noise it's you can kind of hear a wearing noise similar to the um, basically the solid mount that I had in my 10th gen Civic it feels the exact same way and on that one it was solid on one side and then it had a poly bushing on the other so, and yeah. it feels basically the same where it's obviously limiting the movement within the drivetrain but it's also going to allow all the vibration that would otherwise be mitigated by the soft rubber to come across. Yeah. But, I mean, that's a trade-off. Yeah, of course. If you want to make more power, you're going to burn more gas. You know, you can't have it all. But as far as for track use, this is definitely something that I would want because it's going to keep that power where it needs to go and which is to the rear end versus getting lost in the forward and backward motion as the drivetrain is moving. Right now we're cruising 40 miles an hour. I don't really hear much. Maybe very lightly you can kind of hear the drivetrain, but where you kind of hear it the most is as soon as you're taking off. You can kind of hear it just wind up. I would agree. So while you're cruising, it isn't really noticeable. At least to us car guys, we can kind of hear it. We know what's there and what's not, but if somebody was to get in your car, at least with the poly mount, it's doable. I can live with it. Yeah. Now, if you're not a car person and you absolutely want a quiet, luxurious car, obviously you wouldn't even be modding it. Yeah, you would keep it stuck. Yeah. But most car people are performance oriented and as such, they're gonna do whatever they can to get the most out of their car. Especially if you're track focused, if you're autocrossing, drag racing, road course, that's where these kind of mods are really gonna come into play and provide you with that tenth of a second if that's what you're looking for to get the best time possible. Uh, again, whether you're on the strip or if you're killing cones or trying to avoid killing cones this would be the way to go because you want everything to be stiff you want everything to be in control so to speak and also i have coilovers on the car they're set pretty stiff so you're already going to feel everything as it is yeah the initial hit you can clearly hear it winding up do you feel any harshness like while you're driving as far as like harshness, the only thing would be the noise. But yeah. I have a pretty loud sound system, so most of the time I'm going to be drowning that out. But if I'm driving with no audio and I'm just driving normal, it's like, how can I put it? It's almost like you can hear the motor more because it's more connected to you. Yeah. And again, that's, you know, you're going to have your pros and your cons with any mod that you do. You add an exhaust to free up horsepower and you're going to get more noise. It's just the game. It's how it is. So if this is not an issue for you, then it's definitely worth it. Um, like I said, I mean, this thing spun through second and it's not done that at least so, so much. Normally it'll spin a little and then hook and go. This case, it spun all the way through second gear and then shifted to third. And 
for what it's worth, this automatic compared to all the others I've driven is not bad. Yeah. It's actually a pretty decent transmission and unlike some other transmissions like in Hondas, it doesn't lock you out of first gear once you're in second. You can still get into first gear in this transmission, which is great. But for sure, like right off the right out of the gate, it just spins. Hit the gear, spins. It almost feels like I have more power than I thought I did. And it's I'm actually surprised that it makes such a difference as far as power delivery. This is where you realize how much that rubber stock piece allows for movement. Obviously, if you're not into performance, you're gonna want the soft rubber because you don't feel anything, you don't hear anything. And this originally is a luxurious car. It's a luxury sedan, it just happens to be a, the sportiest model. But it's still a luxury sedan through and through. I'm not exact on the miles, but this is with a thousand, over a thousand miles with the transmission mount. I'm gonna show you now the startup. As you can see, or here, I'm not sure if the camera can pick it up, but it literally feels like OEM when you start the car. Here you can see the water is pretty much still. Now let's go for a drive. So accelerating as normal. You don't feel any difference. Put my seatbelt on. Again, I'm in drive, stopped. There is no vibration in the car right now. Again, the car feels almost completely like it was before. Like. I'm not gonna say it feels stock because I have a tune, I'm dropped on springs, I have a somewhat loud exhaust. You know, after I did the three inch midsection on my car, I actually got drone, which caused vibrations in my car. So I feel that gave me more vibration than this mount did. Now initially when this was installed on my boys Red Sport, yes, there was vibration noticed that wearing noise that you get from accelerating after zero miles an hour to about maybe 15 miles an hour was louder now I don't really hear it you do if you like put your ear close to the shift knob so you do hear if you put your ear close to the shift knob and you accelerate slowly between zero to zero and 15 miles an hour, as well as decelerating from 15 to zero. Other than that, there's no noises. So, in regards to noise, I don't hear any. In regards to vibration, is there some present Realistically, there should be some type of vibration present and it's just either I don't feel a difference or I just got used to it. This car feels more uncomfortable because of the springs, not because of the mount. Harshness, I've never noticed any harshness. The OEM manufacturers dictate harshness to be it's pretty much, you know, the rough ride over bumps or roads. So 
the mount doesn't give any harshness at least not the not the poly with the poly insert with the solid insert you can expect nvh to just increase drastically this thing just feels really good honestly it shifts it feels like it's shifting smoother but that's because there's no excessive movement in the drivetrain right now whenever i would shift and i have low like in this rpm range around 2000 i would feel a lugging happening after every shift and now i don't feel that it literally feels sportier it feels like it shifts quicker the shifts are cleaner poly insert just gives you the best of both worlds you have performance and comfort car feels good man it feels really good i have nothing negative to say about this mount when it comes to the racing aspect of this mount i haven't tested it yet um i'm actually gonna go to the track probably this month with my new setup i have a few tweaks that i did to my car including this mount pride autos diff mount I'm getting skinnies for the front, a race seat, and I'm going to tweak the tune a little bit. So I should expect to have better numbers out of my quarter mile. See, back then it would lug pretty bad. So is there some vibration present? Maybe. Is it intolerable? Hell no. Look at the water. I'm in drive. In traffic. It's still. I'm gonna put it in neutral. Still. I'm going to rev it. It only moved when the engine moved. And the water went side to side. It didn't like vibrate like a resonance. This is where you might get some drone and vibration. If, if you constantly accelerate in a very high gear and low RPM, you will feel some vibration, but I'm not quite sure that's entirely because of the mount. That could be a mixture of the exhaust with the mount. Either way, you don't wanna to accelerate too much at a very high gear because that can cause low speed premature ignition and that's not good pretty much knock i don't get no funny noises nothing when i turn at a full turn to the right or to the left the only noise that i have from my car is after i had the motor replaced i got it back and it's made this weird clinking noise out front they're saying it's the exhaust shields inside the engine bay i don't believe that they can't find it and i'm still trying to locate that pretty much that's the only noise that i have so and i'll give you guys a review on the diff brace coming up now if you're interested in purchasing this mount all i have to do is click the link below or use the code zillafoolboost at checkout for five percent off